Hey, it's Saturday, January 27th, and we're back on the chasing the air leaks thing. Uh, we got this done uh, about a month ago now, and uh, we got our shipment of fittings. And uh, these two go down, I guess we'll start with these two first. These uh, go down there at the air dryer. Uh, these three little ones go on the air governor, and this goes on the air compressor. So let's uh, get a peek what we got going on down here. Got need some wrenches, some winches, probably standard sizes. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna get started with these two half inch male pipe thread. I guess I should say this in the in the direction that the part, fitting part numbers. The, the hose end is the first dash number. So it's half inch hose tube, I should say. Half inch tubing to half inch pipe thread, 90 degree. And then this little quarter inch line that's here is uh, quarter inch tube, quarter inch pipe. Oh, I gotta go, dang it. There's a, a spec to how many turns you tighten these. It's three eighths to half inch. I remember it's four full turns, but I don't know how many turns it is for the quarter. So let me go look that up. Here's our first fitting to change. This is a quarter inch tube, quarter inch mail pipe. And uh, this is uh, the signal line from the air governor here. Uh, so this is not more convenient. It's not easier to work with to quickly, you know, just press in this little collar to release and all that good stuff. But we're not looking for easy. We're looking for no air leaks. So I had to use a socket and a ratchet to unscrew this from up in there because this fitting's kind of in the way. So now we're gonna put this guy in there. I guess I'll take this off and see if we can That'll go, if the socket will go over that entirely. So we can get that in there. Yes, it does go all the way up in there. Sometimes the inside of deep sockets is not conducive to that kind of a thing. All right, let's see if we can get that in there. And then also we need to be able to get a wrench on the nut after it's in there. And I got my trusty little wire brush here for cleaning out the holes. And I've got this guy here for blowing out the hole of any of the uh, crusted up thread paste or Teflon tape or whatever they got up in there to clean that out. All right, that's looking really good. I'll be able to get a wrench on that nut. So uh, the sleeve is in the fitting. It's pressed in there. So we got to get the nut and then the ferrule and slide these up on the tube, which I don't think I'll be able to do. What one in here? Let's see. Okay. Oh, okay. It's staying. I thought it might just slip off. So we put that on there. And this goes all the way up in there. I aim in the right place. There. Push that all the way up in, into the fitting. Okay, till it stops. Then that. Then that turns in there like that. And once it touches, that's when you count the turns. You gotta hold that in when you tighten. That's when you count the turns um, to get the proper crimp. And that's what that looks like. Here's our quarter inch line and our half inch line. Done here. Now let's get up on the governor. There's the governor. And right there on top is the 45 degree fitting. And on the side, there's two 90 degree fittings. Now that looks like a little bit of a pain, but uh, not too bad, I don't think. Let's see if I can do that without unbolting 
the governor for access. I might be able to do it in place. Oh, yeah, all right, so we did have to take the valve off to get access, and we have to dismount the valve from the mounting bracket in order to get a wrench on this thing. So, uh, yeah. Well, uh, this guy is not gonna work here because it's too short. When you start screwing it in, it'll, it hits this boss before I can get it tight enough. So we're gonna change up some stuff here. I guess I should have bought 245s. This port, this port, and this port are all common. So I could have put another 45 in there, but uh, I took the plug out of this and we're gonna try screwing this guy in the top Yeah, that'll work. And then we'll put the plug in right here. And I'm going to use some Rector Seal. Oopsie. Rector Seal number five on my pipe threads here. All these new fittings have got this red sealant already installed on them. So that's kind of nice. Gosh darn it. This is the fitting that's on top of the air compressor. It's not pipe thread. It's uh, it's not tapered pipe. I guess that might be considered straight pipe. I don't know, but it's got a gasket on it. And the gasket's got a, or O-ring, it's got a crack. So now, do I just scoop this up with thread sealant? Tighten it back up? Or do I put the whole project on hold? Well, you know what I think I'm gonna do? I'm gonna goop it up with thread sealant, screw it in there, and uh, get another fitting. This is gonna be something I'm gonna get from Freightliner probably. <sighs> All right, so we're done. Uh, We're done for the day anyway. And that certainly would have been better if that one fitting on the right was a 45. It would have fit in there a lot better, but hey, it's in there and it's tight. And I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, also, sorry about that. Replace this push to connect with uh, compression. And uh, just to show you or explain to you how I dislike these damn push connects, when I was tightening this one, this thing pulled out just by accident. I don't know. I must have just pushed on that or something. I just freaking hate the things. Let me show you what we got here in the back. And then we'll crawl under the bus and I'll show you the work I've done. So... These uh, wire stripping pliers did a fabulous job um, cutting the tubing. I've got, a, I mean, somewhere I've got a pair of regular tubing cutting, tube cutting pliers. I don't know where the heck they are. But we were trimming all these off to get the little damaged piece. And it's easy enough to do. You just cut it right at the, the little groove there. Here's all the fittings I replaced today. And these are like 19, 20 years old fittings. And, uh, you know, they got O-rings in them, the plastic pieces. The stuff's not gonna last forever, so we're changing them out. I got some leftovers. This is for another project. Actually, this is a mistake. Um, oh, this is not a mistake. It was odd that the price changed when to buy four of these was one price and above four, it's another price and when you buy five, it comes out to be the same price as buying four for the total. So I bought five. I had an extra one of these. And these are for uh, another project. Also, um, we were cleaning out the holes with the half inch pipe tap. The wet tank is pretty rusty on the inside. So that was uh, pretty instrumental in making sure we did a good job. We are aired up right now. I aired up the bus tanks with uh, the shop air compressor i've got a fitting that's a male male fitting 
then I put it at the end of my air hose and I can put it on this and open the valve. So if my tanks are full, I don't hear any hissing. So all those fittings I've got underneath the bus are doing their job. I mean, there could be some minuscule little leaks, but uh, let's uh, squeeze underneath here and I'll show you what I did. All right, so uh, all the brass fittings, I mean, all of the fittings uh, on this side of the tanks are replaced with new compression brass fittings, except for this, I think that's a pop-off. <clears throat> yeah, that's a pop-off valve there safety relief valve and the drain valves are not replaced i wanted to buy new ones but the supplier that i bought all these from uh the website was erroring when i clicked on these it was like taking me somewhere else like there's something wrong with the web page and i should have called them up and uh, asked them if they could uh, get these and maybe it's just a problem with the web page but uh, they're not leaking right now, and I can always change those out later. So on the forward side, all right, so here's the, the wet tank. This is um, getting air from the air dryer right here. This is the main air coming in. And so we've got uh, this line that goes to the um, governor, this quarter inch line. And that's the pressure sensing line for the governor. So I'm pretty sure we had a leak somewhere with, with this, this, or this, or the other ends of these things anyway. Um, why my governor was cycling a lot. Um, because um, the gauges on the dashboard, I'm pretty sure that they don't monitor the wet tank. I'm not 100% certain. I'm going I'm to actually find out. It might be this green one here that goes in. But anyway, let me uh, stop rambling on. Here's the front side. So um, this is a little bit of an oversight here. This is a, a check valve. And I should have ordered a half inch pipe to 3 8 tube straight fitting. And somehow I missed that. So this is still the original push to connect. And the one fitting up on the air compressor still the original so everything in the whole front of the bus um, has been redone except for these two fittings and uh, ex also accepting the relay valve which is right here all right so this only gets pressure when you press on the brake um, is that right no one of these actually gets tank pressure and then one of them gets pressure when you step on the brake and the third one is what goes to the brake chambers so i mean i got these here and then um the fittings uh, that go through the the bulkhead fitting there on the frame that connect to the hoses there's a 90 up there i haven't changed those i'm saving that for uh, another phase of this project because um i just am so what I haven't been able to do, uh, going to the back of the bus, is back here. This is um, proprietary Freightliner chassis valving, and these are all pushed to connect, and there's no way to replace these with not pushed to connect um, without completely redesigning what we've got here. Uh, one of these is a um, electrically operated solenoid valve. I think it's the yellow one that controls the engine radiator fan. Uh, there's a, the little orange one here on this end. That's your low air pressure buzzer. One of these is a brake light switch. And then you got your pressure protection valve. I know that's this one here. And uh, I don't know. I don't have all that figured out. So none of that's been messed with except I did replace the pressure protection valve because it was leaking at the, uh, actually I should have replaced every one of them, but they weren't cheap. So I'm replacing them as I need to. And uh, lastly, I have not replaced any of the fittings 
on the relay valves back here uh, because I can't. These are proprietary push to connect right into the valve itself. So if these leak, I have to replace the whole valve and that's gonna get expensive to do just, uh, well, I guess, I guess there's a couple of them I could have changed. That looks like that's a uh, pipe thread, right? Yeah, there's a couple of them. So, you know, I, that'll be another phase of the project. But for now, I'm done. And uh, next step, we're gonna crank up the bus and we're gonna see if our rapid compressor cycling has been resolved. I think that's got it. As you can hear it when the compressor kicks back in. Great. I'm pretty sure the problem was those little hoses right around here. Because you could wiggle them before and they were, you could hear them leaking. Hakuna Matata, everyone. It's Monday, January 29th. Man, can you believe it? The whole month of January is just about done. So uh, I thought I would take a minute and exp I've already I've already bought a brand new one of these uh, fittings and installed it, and everything's fine. There's no more leak up in the engine area. Uh, but I thought I would take a look and see what's going on. The the little O-ring is here and it's like hardened up almost like carbon because it's been cooked for 18 years at the discharge at the head of that air compressor and uh, this is the remains of the o-ring that was around the base here so you know what if you had some o-rings you could just reseal this thing uh, this is a uh, the ring that went right there that the o-ring would sit on it so that would you know kind of captivate captive the o-ring in that little chamfer that it has uh there's no reason at all why you couldn't just change the o-ring in one of these and this thing you just uh pull and spin while you're pulling and this thing just yanks right out from the front of it there and snaps right back in. So there you go, man. A couple O-rings. If you ever get a leak on one of these, just change out the O-rings and uh, save you some money. If you've got the O-rings, that is.